Welcome to our Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday service. You know, we have a usual Easter greeting. Uh, so the person would say, Christ is risen, and you respond, He is risen indeed. We'll probably use that again throughout the entire service and later on in the sermon, but no harm is saying it now. Uh, anyway, it's Easter. So wherever you are at home, and if there are others with you, you can, you can just... just jerk them, push them a little bit and say, come on, say it together with me. So at the count of three, I would say, Christ is risen and then you would respond. Ready? One, two, three. Christ is risen. I could almost hear you. Let's try that once again. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And because he is risen, he is risen we have so many reasons to celebrate and to worship His name. So I'm going to have a time of worship right now, and I'm going to invite you to not just sit down there and spectate, but also worship God together with us because He is truly deserving of our worship and our praise and all the glory and honour that we can give to Him. So I'll see you in a few moments' time. For now, let us all worship God together. Good morning, church. Welcome to our online Resurrection Sunday service. Thank you for welcoming us into your homes, and we're so glad to be worshipping with you this morning. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed.
How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to where my sin has spoken, I am forgiven, the King of kings calls me his own, beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living.
And now please join me as we pray the prayer for illumination. Together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, through, through your, your only Son, Son you, you overcame death and opened to us the light of, of eternity. eternity. Enlighten our minds and kindle our hearts with the presence of your Spirit, that we may hear the words of comfort and challenge in the reading of the Scriptures. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let's warmly welcome Pastor Reuben for the word. Good morning, everyone from TPMC to Pi Methodist Church. This is Easter, Resurrection Sunday, and uh, we're glad that you can join us at home for this service. Well, you know, the usual saying or greeting that we do on uh, any Easter Sunday, I'll say, Christ is risen, and you will, of course, respond, uh, He is risen indeed. So let's try, wherever you are, in your homes, in your rooms, dining table, whatever, just watching this, let's try it together. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Okay, I can't hear you from here, but I'm going to have faith that you are doing this at home. Well, it's been maybe almost a week where we have all been in this circuit breaker mode and we're all at home. And so I'm going to try this little short game here just to make sure you are still active in your minds and you can still coordinate your bodies and everything together. So just, just, just bear with me for this, right? The simple game. Um, all I need to do is point and say something. So for example, so this is a test example, okay? Now you point here, and when I say, what are the abbreviations of the two syllabus of the word joking? So for example, joking, so J-O-K-I-N-G. So two syllabus, Jo and King. So two times you say it. Now that means J and K. So let's try that. So point up here, what are the two what are the abbreviations of the word joking? J, K. Yeah, it's simple enough. Now, this is the real one then. It's no more example, but a real test. Now, point down here. What are the abbreviations of the word mountain? Come on, you can do this. Abbreviations of the word mountain. It's M-O-U-N-T-E-I-N. So mountain would be, do you do it? Do you get it? M. T. Now say it again. M. T. I don't know where you get it now, but what you just did was to point in your own head and said it was empty. Now I hope you don't get offended at home with us here, but it's just one way of emphasizing on what we are celebrating on Easter morning, on Resurrection Sunday, that the tomb was empty. And hopefully that little exercise there will help you to remember always, forever about the emptiness of the tomb. If you've been to Israel before, there's this place called the Garden Tomb. It's a tomb where uh, some would believe that's where Jesus' tomb was or around the same area. And here it is, the Garden Tomb. And if you go there, it's a very nice setting, the garden and all. But one thing that would strike your attention would be the door. That's the entrance to the tomb. And on the door, there are some words. And to zoom in for you, you see these words. He is not here, for he is risen. Empty tomb. But what are the chances that the tomb was empty? Well, in 2002, there was this uh, professor of uh, philosophy, and he was doing an article, he was doing a, a lecture, and th this whole thing appeared in the New York Times, in 2002, and this article talks about that lecture that he gave. So to summarize, to give you some points from that article or in that lecture, so this is what happened. Richard Swinburne, professor of philosophy from Oxford University, he was giving a lecture to 100 plus other philosophers in Yale University. And while he was there, he was talking about this, how improbable that Jesus actually was raised from the dead, that the tomb was empty and Jesus resurrected. For someone dead for 36 hours to come to life again is, according to the laws of nature, extremely, extremely improbable. So this lecture was talking about this, how 
probable, what are the chances that Jesus actually resurrected from the dead and the tomb was empty? Well, he goes on and he uses this theory or this formula called the Bayes theorem. A lot of maths and calculation involved in it. And then he says this. I'm not going to go to all the details, but basically in terms of the formula, he says this. Given E and K, H is true if and only if C is true. All the formula stuff in Bayes' theorem. And then he goes on to say this. The probability of H given E and K is 0.97. H being the probability of Jesus being resurrected and the tomb being empty is 0.97. Seven. What does that mean? It means this, in percentage terms, the probability of Jesus' resurrection and the tomb being empty is 97%. 97%. Based on a formula that's used for economics and everything else, put in all the other things about Jesus, it's 97% probability that Jesus raised, was raised from the dead and therefore the tomb was empty. Now, what exactly happened on that day then for the people to discover the tomb was empty and that Jesus had been resurrected? For that, let's go to the, the words now of God and Scripture. From Luke verse chapter 24, rather, verse 1 all the way down, we read this. And I'm going to invite you once again to read together with me from wherever you are. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning. On the first day, Sunday is always the first day. Saturday is the Sabbath and Sunday is the beginning of the week. So on the first day of the week, Sunday, and that's why we worship on Sundays, very early in the morning, the women, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. Why spices? Because they wanted to anoint the body of the dead with the spices so that the smell of their body as it decays, will not be so strong. So that's the reason why they brought spices with them as they went to the tomb on that Sunday morning. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Why? Because there was a huge stone that was blocking the entrance to the tomb. So they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus empty. And then, in verse 4, while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men appeared, in clothes appeared, that gleamed like lightning, stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the man said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Essentially, if you catch this, the two men, which we know from the other accounts are angels, the two men were saying that Jesus was alive and he wasn't dead. And therefore, he asked the women this question, why are you looking for the living in this place where all the dead are? Don't do that. And we go on. They said this, and that's why the words appeared on that door in that garden tomb. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Then they remembered his words. The tomb was empty because Jesus had been raised. Jesus wasn't dead anymore. He was alive. What we can say then is this, that the emptiness of the tomb is different from how we usually perceive the word empty. You know, we always talk about how Jesus turns things around, turns the world upside down with all his teachings, with all the kinds of principles that he holds. Like how it's not about when those who are in power, it's not about how you use that power as leaders to thumb it down on others and to cause others to serve you. But the greatest are those who serve others. The leaders ought to serve others. How he as a master and a rabbi did not just stretch out his feet to be washed by his disciples, but he took 
the role of a servant leader, even going down in love, washing the feet of his disciples. Jesus turns everything upside down. And even in this, he turns our perception of the word empty upside down. When you think of the word empty, it's always a negative impression. In these days where people rush to all the supermarkets to buy stuff, to hoard it, hoard up because they are concerned and worried and panicky. When the shelves are empty, that's not a good sign. That causes fear and panic. When you're driving and then this little colored thing on your panel lights up, an E lights up, it tells you that your fuel tank is soon going to be empty. And again, that's not a good sign. You get worried, empty. There's so many things in life now. Some of us may be thinking, oh, it's so empty. My children are married or they've gone away or my spouse has recently passed on and life doesn't seem to be worth the living because it feels so empty. Empty is a negative word. But on this Resurrection Sunday, on this Easter Sunday, I hope somehow that Jesus' way of turning things upside down will also turn our perceptions and our emotions and where we think we are upside down. Jesus turns the world upside down because in this, in this place and in this scenario, the word empty is not a bad thing. The word empty and the empty scene is actually a foundation and a sign of life. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? The tomb is empty. Empty is good because Jesus is alive. He's not among the dead. So emptiness is a sign of life. And beyond that, it tells us something else. The women came to the tomb on that early Sunday morning and their hearts were heavy. Maybe they were experiencing lives that had become empty because of Jesus' crucifixion on Good Friday. Maybe they just felt that life wasn't worth the living anymore. No plans, no future, don't know because everything is so uncertain. Their beloved master and rabbi, Jesus the Christ, had been killed. And they came and for them it must have been a tragic moment. The, the proceedings of the past few days bring them to the tomb here. But the moment they stepped in and they saw em and the empty tomb and they heard the words of the two men or the two angels, they realized this, the emptiness wasn't a bad thing, it was a sign of life, which means this, their tragedy had been turned by God into triumph. Because Jesus being dead is tragic, and to them it's a tragedy. But Jesus being alive is triumph. Many years later, uh, this person by the name of Paul, and we know him as the Apostle Paul, who is responsible for the bulk of the New Testament, would write these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32. And he's talking about the resurrection and the hope we have in Christ. He says this, If I fought with wild beasts in Ephesus, with no more than human hopes, what have I gained if the dead are not raised He's talking about resurrection. And then he says this, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. That really is the case. You see, if Jesus hadn't resurrected and the empty tomb wasn't a sign of life, it would mean that tragedy remains as tragedy and tragedy would never be able to be turned into triumph. If that's the case, then what should we do? Eat, drink for tomorrow we die. There really is no future. There really is no reason for hope. But no, that's not the case because Jesus did live again. And therefore, Paul moves on to say in verse 54 and 55 of 1 Corinthians 15, but death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? So because of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, because of Jesus living again, the empty tomb is a sign of life. And the tragedy of Jesus' death has been turned around by God into a triumph for not just Christ, 
but for all of us who place our hope in Jesus the Christ who has triumphed over death. Can I just submit this to you then? If Jesus can conquer death, if, if death was not a problem at all for Jesus, and when death thought that they had victory, it became an empty victory because the tomb became empty and Jesus lived again, a sign of life. And tragedy became triumph. And because Christ can do that, if Christ can overcome and conquer death, then may I just submit to you that we can also submit our problems to Christ. Because if, that, if Christ can overcome the problem of death that's so big, that's so huge, that for us we can never overcome, what are our problems now that we think Christ cannot overcome on our behalf? So instead of feeling empty, let us hold on that emptiness leads to life. If we would just submit all, all those things that cause us to be empty to Christ. If we are currently now experiencing whatever we define or term as tragedies in our lives, again, will you not, sub will you not submit that tragedy to Christ? Because in Christ's overcoming and conquering of death, we know this, the tragedy can be turned on its head to become triumphs. And we ought to trust in Christ who was dead and who is now living. There was this boy who was in a Sunday school class. This boy was always a little bit awkward, a bit different from the rest. You know, we've all grown up having some people like that in our classes or in our groups or in our schools or even in our Sunday school cohort. Maybe we are one of those. Somehow it is a bit different from the rest. Not bad, not wrong, not weird, but just a bit awkward, socially awkward perhaps, just a bit different from others. Well, this boy in this Sunday school class was that boy. And what happened was this. Because he was a bit different from the rest, the rest, well, never really paid much attention to him. They never bullied him. This is a Sunday school, it's a church thing. They never made fun of him, but they kind of just left him alone. They accepted him, or rather they coped with his presence. But that was it. Well, one Easter morning, they were having this Sunday school class, and the teacher gave them a, an assignment. I thought it would be fun for them to do something, get out of the class on that Easter morning, the Resurrection Sunday, get out of class, not just have a simple lesson, but also get out. And the, the teacher therefore gave each and every child in the Sunday school class one of those plastic eggs. You know what those things are? Those plastic eggs that you can open up in two. You can cover up again. And sometimes, back in those days, if you do those toys, those games, you can buy an egg and you wonder what's inside until you open it up and you have a surprise. That's the present or the prize you have in those empty eggs. Well, this Sunday school teacher gave one child, every child, male or female, one of those plastic eggs. And they all are empty. And he gave them this assignment. All of you, please get out of the classroom, go into the backyard, the gardens around, or whatever you can find on the church compounds, and find whatever you can to symbolize life. Because we're talking about life on Easter Sunday. Resurrection Sunday is about life, Jesus coming to life again. So go out of your classrooms, Go out to your, to your, everywhere in this church compound and find whatever you think and you believe symbolizes life and put it inside that little egg and come back into the room. Give them 15 minutes to do that. All of them ran out there and could hear the laughter, the, the running feed, and all the things going on out there. 15 minutes time, they all came back. And one by one, they opened up their plastic eggs. The first one opened up and he managed to find a butterfly somewhere, caught it or a picture of it, put it inside. Butterfly. Of course, butterfly is life. The caterpillar goes into a cocoon and after a while, life. Yeah, it's a butterfly. Another child comes in and, and takes, and we open, they open up the egg, they found a piece of stone inside. And why stone? Well, the tomb cover was rolled away, so that's a sign of life. Others came with different things. Some came in with a stick. 
and say, well, the stick will bloom or something. The flower, the flower is a sign of beauty and life. And all these different things, different child in their imagination came in with all these different things in their eggs. And then it came to this boy, this awkward boy's turn. And the, the teacher opened up his little egg and guess what was inside it? Nothing. The egg remained empty. And all the other Sunday school students, all the other classmates of his, all his friends, burst out in laughter. And they said, this is, he doesn't even understand the instructions. It's supposed to be something that symbolizes life. And emptiness does not symbolize life. And the little boy over there just quietly tucked his teacher's sleeve and said, but teacher, no, this symbolizes life. Because on the very first Easter Sunday, the very first Resurrection Sunday, 2,000 years ago, the tomb was empty. Emptiness is a sign of life. Tragedy became triumph. Unfortunately, the little boy lost his life in a few months' time. Never knew what happened. Probably an illness or sickness that took him away. At his funeral, his entire class, the Sunday school class, his church friends all came and all attended his funeral. And people were going there to place flowers on his coffin. But as the entire class moved forward with the teacher, they placed not a flower, but they placed that empty egg plastic container on this little boy's coffin. Why? Because this boy in Christ would be experiencing the emptiness that leads to life, the resurrected life. And even in that place or in that scene of tragedy, a boy losing his life to illness, they reminded everyone that because of who God is and what Christ has done, tragedy will be turned into triumph. So will you not remember this word empty? Empty. Link it up to the empty tomb. And whenever now you hear the word empty in the news or anything, empty shelves, empty this, the buses are empty, MRT empty, the streets are empty. Whenever you hear empty, will you please not feel despair? But will you please remember, remind yourself, like, the ladies remembering Jesus' words. Will you please remember now, whenever you hear and you read the word empty, that it is a sign of life because we have Christ. And whatever we are going through now, if it falls into your definition of tragedy, know this, if Christ can overcome and conquer death, there is no problem too big for him. And whatever tragedies there are, they will be turned into triumphs. Will you please join me in prayer? Father, we thank you that Christ was raised from the dead. That if Christ can overcome death, there is no mountain too big. There is no problem too big. There is nothing too big that he cannot handle, that he cannot move, and he cannot solve. So Lord, help us to remember that. Help us also, wherever we are, in our hearts, in our minds, in our emotions, to stir us in our faith that we can trust in you. Because you are a God who takes things and turns things around. What the world perceives as bad empty, you turn into something good because it's life. And what the world perceives as problems and tragedies, you will bring a solution and turn it around into a triumph. So Lord, we trust in you. And we thank you that Christ is risen. And he is risen indeed. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ruben, for your sermon. And now, good morning, church. Every second and fourth Sundays of the month, we actually commit our praise and prayer items to God. And now that we're not meeting physically, 
we are not able to submit physical forms, but we have made these prayer and praise forms available online for all of us. So under the online sermons website, you should uh, online services website, you should see a link with prayer and praise there. Click on it and you are still able to submit your items. So keep them coming. We would love to pray and praise God alongside with you. Okay, so um, for today, we will begin by giving thanks to God with our praise items and John will lead us through this. So you can see on the screen, the praise items are up there and today we have a praise report uh, from a member whose daughter was tested negative for the COVID-19 virus. So I would like to give all of us some time, wherever you are, to give thanks together with our brother and sister and also to give thanks for whatever things that you have to give thanks for. Come, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are God who answers prayers. And Lord, even in this time of uncertainty where this COVID-19 virus is just spreading like wildfire, God, we just want to thank you that a sister has been tested negative for this virus. And Lord, we want to lift up our thanksgiving to you, whatever it is. And we thank you, Lord, that you are a faithful God. Now we'll have the prayer items and uh, these are family needs that need prayer for. So I'd like to give you some time to pray together with our brothers and sisters who have these needs. Also, if you have any other needs that you would like to lift up to God in prayer, I encourage you also to pray for yourself and for for those around you in this time. Come, let's pray. Come, let's just commit our prayers to God. Heavenly Father, we know that you are God who hears our prayers. And Father, you hear the cries of your people. Lord, we want to pray for a safe return of family from overseas. We pray for a flight. And Lord, we just pray that the, the transit will be smooth as well. Lord, we also want to pray for a member who is seeking approval for a housing loan. Lord, we know that even in this time of uncertainty, you will be providing for her. Lord, we just want to thank you that you hear all our prayers. We thank you that you are God who will answer our prayers. And we thank you, Lord, that you are a faithful God. So we lift up all our prayers to you, knowing, Lord, that you hear them. That's right. And we, and we thank you, Lord, that you are such a good God. God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, Tobiah Methodist Church. Thank you so much for joining us for our Resurrection Online service. Okay, Resurrection Sunday. I just said Resurrection Online. Resurrection Sunday Online service. Okay, and now we are going to do the traditional Resurrection Sunday greeting. And so we shall go. The sun is risen. He is risen indeed. That's right. So if you're um, worshipping, you know, joining us um, with your family members or anyone around you, why don't you extend that traditional welcome to them? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Just correction. Well, it is not uh, the sun is risen, but the traditional greeting is always Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So maybe just turn to whoever is around you and say, Christ is risen, Clem. He is risen indeed, John. Hallelujah. So give you a few moments to do that. That is right. If you are not with anyone physically, take a picture of yourself and send it to your connect group, you know, or any of your ministry groups saying, Christ is risen and the rest can respond, He is risen indeed. So um, this family news Mm -hmm. is brought to you by John and Clem. Now, what's significant about this? Well, you do realise that John and Clem, the initials stand for JC. Now, JC is really, really significant as an initial. Why? Tell us, John. Because JC stands for John Choi. Hmm. 
Uh, I think I think you got that wrong. I think on Resurrection Sunday, the right answer should be Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. All right, J C for Jesus Christ. He is risen. Okay, and now we'll be um, really connecting and welcoming those who are joining us for the first time. If you're here with us for the first time, we really love to get to know you. So on our website, you would find a contact form link. Just click on that and you will be able to leave your particulars there. And when you leave your particulars, we would get connected with you and update you on all of our upcoming church mm-hmm. activities. Mm. Okay? Offering. Offering. Oh, but you do realize that um, the church is a little bit empty today, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It looks quite empty. Well, but here. the good thing is this, that the empty church does remind us of the empty tomb. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. Right? That Preach so it, brother. Important. That is so important because if the tomb was still not empty, <laughs> then our faith will be in vain, isn't it, Clement? That is true. That is true. So yeah. the tomb is empty. And the church is empty, but Christ is risen and the church is alive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, so now in any way, we are going to have um, enter time of offering, right? And uh, just to remind us that offering is an act of worship uh, towards God. And we invite all of you to participate in this act of worship together with us wherever you are. Now, That's there are right. three ways to participate in this act of worship. Uh, even though you're not in church First way is by pay now Second way is by pay la, And the third way is by bank transfer Now for the first two ways Pay now and pay la, You would need to open your mobile banking apps Right, you open the apps And then um, use the QR code scanner To scan the QR code which is on our screen Down here Alright And once you've done that You can uh, send the, your offerings Through this um, online platform Now if you do not have any mobile banking apps Do not worry Right, you can still transfer your tithes and your offerings um, through bank transfer. That's right. Right, and you can just follow the instructions on the screen. Now, do take note for pledges and tithes. Please indicate under the reference number um, P and then your name. So, for example, if I'm the one doing it, I'll just do it P Jonathan Choi. And um, contributions received without indication will immediately go to the church general offering. That is correct. Thank you, John, for that. And now our leaders in the offering prayer, so join me. Father, we just want to thank you that you are the giver of all that we have. So even as we give to you a portion of what you have first given to us, we pray that you will be glorified and we pray for the use of the offering, that it will truly extend your kingdom's work and that you also bless the givers of the offering this morning. So we commit all this to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, now going on to our family news. First up, we have TPMC Gives. Now, John, why don't you tell us more about this? Now, TPMC Gives is going to happen today, today, um, from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah. Now, TPMC Gives, a uh, portion of it has already been done on Monday, Thursday, where right. bread was distributed to those who need it. That's right. right. Now, the second part of TPMC Gives is happening today, and we are going to give blood. Yeah, blood. It's important. Why blood? Um, because I guess um, our blood banks in Singapore are actually running low. That's right. And blood in Singapore is essential to save lives. I Frankly, I have been a re- recipient of blood transfusion myself. Wow. Yeah. How? And how? Um, through a needle? <laughs> As in, on what occasion did oh. you receive blood transfusion? Well, Clem, I thought you wanted me to educate <laughs> you in the in the process of blood transfusion. But yeah, um, I mean, I, I met with an accident a couple of years ago and they had to give me blood because I lost so much blood. I so, see. I mean, without the blood in the blood banks, I wouldn't have um, received the blood transfusion. I may not be sitting here talking to you today. That's right. Yeah. So, anyway, if you have not signed up for TPMC Gifts, do sign up in the link that you can find on the screen that's right right? and um, to sign up because it will help us in our social uh, social distancing yes that's that's the password for this that's right because we have different time slots and when you register it will allow the community to tell you which time slot you should be coming at so that you wouldn't have to wait around and you wouldn't have to waste time but um, when you register and you're given that time slot you can just come and promptly have your blood collected from you and then you can head off after that Correct. So if you can donate blood, if you can 
please come down and um, share this gift of life with those who might need it a little bit later. That is right. Okay, and we are done with this item. What's up next for our family news item? Next item is regard to the church office operations. Now, um, we must have heard also that um, a lot of uh, es- uh, non-essential work uh, has been closed and uh, people are encouraged to work from home. So, just to let all of us know that church office is still operational during this period, right? That's so, right. if you have any pastoral needs that you would like to talk to someone, you need to connect with a uh, 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 pastoral staff or a pastor, you can find our contact emails and our contact numbers in the bulletins which, you can be, which can be found online as well. That's correct. And also, um, our church office is still contactable through the usual number. So call us if you need anything as well. And does that bring us to the end of Family News items? Well, I guess it does. Okay, and so right now, we would present our gifts and our offering to God and as we sing the doxology together. Let us now glorify God with our gifts and our voices. Well, we've come to the end of today's service, uh, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday service. And so we'll see you next week. But before that, until then, will you now receive the blessings of God wherever you are? You know, we're all in our homes and I want you to know that you are not alone. Jesus, who is alive, says this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So even in moments where you feel that you are isolated, You're just by yourself at home. Jesus is with you. Take a deep breath and remind yourself that and experience His presence, His love and His grace with you. So, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father in heaven and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.